Hello and welcome to WP Easy Cart. In this new video tutorial, we're going to walk through how to set up uh, a variety of shipping methods that Easy Cart has to offer. Uh, actually, Easy Cart comes with a, a huge list of shipping methods. Uh, whether you want to set up shipping based on price tables or percentage tables, quantity tables, uh, even weight tables, or if you'd like to set up static shipping rates where you just have maybe two or three set options, uh, EasyCart also offers in our pro and premium versions full live shipping calculators. And those calculators are you get uh, UPS. USPS, FedEx, DHL, Connect Canada Post, and Australia Post. Uh, all of those are included with the Pro and the Premium. Uh, so it's one of the advantages uh, of EasyCart is you don't have to buy these modules individually. You actually get all of our calculators. Uh, so let's walk through and take a look at how to set up some of the shipping options and some of the common uh, pitfalls and errors that we see a lot of customers do. Uh, you can see right here we have a store running with some basic products. Uh, we're just going to pretend these are retail items. Uh, maybe a shirt, a pair of pants, a coat. Um, so what we want to do is have customers be able to click on these items, select one, and put it into their shopping cart. And we want to focus on the shipping aspect here. and there's a few things uh, in settings you'll want to do to set up uh, shipping so it works accurately. So let's take a look at those. I'm going to flip over here to our EasyCart admin. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is the product. And you can see back here on the store, this is a spotted shirt. So I'm going to find that product. Here's the spotted shirt. I'm going to edit it. And when you have this the options uh, for this product you can scroll down and the two I'm kinda curious about right now are the shipping options and my packaging options uh, the first thing I want to look at is shipping options now you can turn a product on and off so it gets calculated into shipping or it doesn't uh, if we come in here and disable shipping for example and come back to our cart if we refresh you notice there's no shipping now because this item doesn't count towards calculating shipping so if you're not seeing shipping showing up you can enable and disable that at the product level so I always want to make sure that that is sh checked for shipping and we'll jump back here and you can see it shows up uh, the second thing I want to check is our packaging options now this depends on if you're using price triggers or weight triggers. Uh, I kind of like to fill out this information regardless. So if I switch shipping methods, it's going to work. Um, for example, you can't ship something that has a zero weight. That would be more for like a service product or a download. Uh, so make sure you kind of accurately put in some weights, especially if you're going to switch to live shipping. And same with width, height, and length. Uh, if you're going to use live shipping calculators, that does go into the package and it gets calculated by some of the carriers. Um, now, if you're going to use price triggers, where let's say everything over $25 is a $5 shipping, then you don't really necessarily need this information, um, but it's nice to have it there in case you switch. Uh, the other thing people always ask is, well, what are the units here? Is this pounds? Is this kilograms? Uh, is this ounces? And that is set up uh, based on what you need. For example, if you use a weight table, it doesn't matter what the units are. What matters is where is this product going to fall on your table? If you use live calculators, then you'll set up whether it represents uh, pounds or kilograms and I'll show you that in a second so it just depends on what you want these units to represent if it's standard then these are you typically in inches and if it's metric then it's typically in centimeters um, pounds and kilograms for the weight but again that's set up by the live shipping calculator and I'll show you the settings here so I like to set up the packaging options and I like to make sure shipping is enabled 
and that's really all you need to do for the product now let's take a look at our settings and this is where you'll set up the shipping and let's go into shipping settings this is where we can actually connect Australia Post, USPS, Canada Post, DHL, FedEx, and UPS. And you have to be able to get an account with them, and you'll have to grab these, uh, you know, different credentials depending on the API that you need. And again, this is where you'll set up whether or not is this going to represent pounds or ounces the conversion rate um, for example if you wanted to bump all of your your live shipping rates from UPS up 10 percent uh, you could put in 1.1 and that would be 110 percent um, so you can mess with those but typically the conversion rate you just leave at zero if you want to just show the rate that comes back um, and again you can see all the different uh, API's have different credentials and that's something you'd have to talk with them on how to get um, one, one common one is USPS and if you're going to get your username it's an API username it's not necessarily your username you use to log in to USPS with uh, typically they come in a format uh, kind of like 123 A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4 that's kind of typical of what your API username will look like so make sure you contact your USPS representative if you have trouble finding that. Uh, that is probably the hardest one we find that customers uh, can't locate and, and it changes so you need to contact your, your rep there to find out where that is. Uh, we have some other settings here in shipping settings um, like for example which country do you want to show up in the list. Uh, you can obviously deselect some of these um, if you just want to ship to one country. Uh, we also have uh, we have set up down in here shipping zones. Uh, shipping zones I'll talk about a little bit later, but the thing to keep in mind with shipping zones is this does not limit where you can ship. Rather, it's a way to have certain rates only show up for certain areas. So if you just want to ship to the United States, you don't want to come in here and mess with shipping zones and delete everybody except for the lower 48. That's not what shipping zones are designed for. Uh, it's set up as a post address filter. So after the user enters their billing and shipping address during checkout, then it can look for one of these matching zones um, and apply a rate if you have a special rate just for them so that's kind of what shipping zones do uh, we also have some additional shipping options for example you can add a global handling rate so if you have any shipping set up you can add five dollars to whatever's returned whether it's USPS or UPS or Canada you want to add five bucks to every single rate you can do that by adding a global handling rate is what we would call it um, you can set up some additional parameters here whether you want to tax shipping or show estimated delivery times or you know enable shipping for subscriptions uh, apply FedEx account discounts uh, if I know FedEx has special rates um, if you want to apply those discounts you can instead of using the defaults so there's some settings here but mainly this is used to connect to the API's and that's our shipping settings. Let's take a look at shipping rates. Okay. And you'll notice under shipping methods here, we have different methods you can use. And you can only pick one at this point and use. So if you use price triggers, you have to stay with price triggers. Uh, you can see here I have a price trigger and it's set up at zero. And the shipping is going to be $5 and you can see I'm not applying it to any zone because it's best to leave these turned off unless you really know what you need to do with the shipping zone. Uh, if I wanted to say okay as soon as the user hits $25 I want the shipping rate to go to $750 I can go ahead and add that to my uh, price trigger and then maybe as I go to $50 uh, I want this shipping to be $10 
and maybe when it goes to a hundred I want it to be free shipping so I'm going to put in a shipping rate of zero so you can build your basic table uh, how you want it and if I flip back over here I'm going to refresh it and you can see I'm over twenty five dollars and my shipping is now seven fifty if I go over a hundred dollars you can see my shipping is now zero because I have a set up for free shipping. Okay, uh, if you want to set up weight triggers, it's very similar. You just set up a scale, and what the uh, what the rate will be, uh, the weight I mean, and the shipping rate. And again, these the units really don't matter here. What matters is is your product one, two, or three, or does it go over three? whether it's kilograms or pounds it really doesn't matter so if I flip to weight you can see I have uh, three pounds yeah, or whatever kilograms and it goes over and it's 750 so if I come back to my cart you can see it's 750 and that's because each of these were one pound or one kilogram so if I lower that down to one you can see I'm now at five and so that's how our table trigger systems work price, weight, quantity. Um, you can even do percentage based. Uh, for example, I just want to charge 10% of whatever's in the customer's cart. So I set up a trigger of zero. Anything over that is going to be 10% of their cart. And if I refresh this, we should see, uh, oh, let me refresh and update this. Oops, I forgot to save this. And I'll come back to my cart. So now you can see I'm 10% of my total. So that's how percentage based works. Um, and let, now let's take a look. Of course, you have static methods. Um, this is where you can set up just hard coded values. I have ground delivery, 795, and I have next day air is 1595. And that's it. They're static, they're always going to show. Oops, forgot to save it again. So I'm going to come in here and save this as static method. Okay, and the cart is always going to pick the the cheapest one. And you can see out of those two statics, this is the cheapest one. Now let's go ahead and check out with this customer. And I already have an account I made up here. Okay, so this person has an address in New York, and I'm shipping from, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I have static rates, so I'm going to continue to shipping. And you can see now I just have those two static rates showing. And so the customer can change, and you can see it changes in the cart. Okay, so that is how static uh, shipping works. The next thing we'll do is take a look at live shipping. Now again you have to set up your credentials back in the shipping settings uh, but I'm going to switch this to live shipping. I'm going to save it this time. And what you do with live shipping is you select a carrier and then you select from the variety of shipping methods that they have and you get to pick which ones you want to have show up. So, for example, UPS, I could select that I want to add three days select. You can give it a shipping label. Three days select. And you can also override the price. Um, every time this is returned, maybe you want it to be free, or maybe every time it comes in, you want it to be $15. You can override that price. You can also set up a free shipping threshold. For example, ground delivery. Let's say you want anything over uh, uh, $25. You want it to be free. So you could set up that, that shipping threshold. And again, shipping zones, I would always leave this as no zone for the most part. Um, that's a pretty specific situation in case you need them. Now if we look down here, you can see all the different rates I have. Uh, I have a couple for USPS and I have a, four of them here for UPS and what I recommend everybody does is when they try to do live rates is add as many of these as you can 
because even though I have six of these shipping codes here, that does not mean UPS and USPS is going to return a rate for every uh, shipping code. For example, you can't have ground delivery from the continental US to Hawaii and so you're never going to see this rate if that person puts in the address and so you need to make sure that you supply a bunch of them and then let the live APIs feed the user what is available and the pricing. So here I've got six different rates uh, again I've got live uh, set up and let's take a look at the storefront now um, I've went ahead and put in some credentials so it's actually connected and I've got two items in my cart here I'm gonna go ahead and refresh and you can see I got a shipping rate of 1481 now this is just in the cart view uh, my customer has not entered their address at this point okay uh, we can check out now we've got an address with New York is where it's going so it's going from Oregon to New York if I continue to shipping you can see I get one USPS rate and I get three of the UPS rates and I've got the different values here and as a customer I can go through and select which one I want and you can see if I selected 1221 that's what I get if I continue to the payment screen with live shipping uh, you can see the customer also gets those rates and can change them right here at checkout okay uh, one thing you might want to do is for example you might want a free uh, a free local delivery um, what we recommend you do there is you do a price override so I'm gonna pick a really common one for example UPS ground and I'm just gonna say free local delivery and I'm going to override the price with zero and so now I've got all of my rates and I also have a free local delivery now let's flip back over here and go back to shipping and let's go back here and you can see now I have a free local delivery of zero so if the user wanted to select that that's really the UPS ground rate but we're just overriding the price and the label uh, so that we get uh, kind of a custom method to show up in this uh, shipping information section and so your customers could select that if they wanted to and make shipping go to zero that's a popular request that a lot of people want to do is override shipping somehow and so you can do that the key here really is the most common mistake is people set up a shipping zone and they expect something to, uh, to show up here in the cart but it always shows up as zero and they can't figure out why and it's because the user has never entered a address and so if you all you have is shipping zones it'll never show up um, shipping zones sh you, you could set up with all of these different rates and then start adding them again and applying a zone and so after the user enters an address then they would show the custom rates based on the zone um, so it's a very specific situation uh, leave those shipping zones off if you don't want to deliver to a country uh, simply come down here to the countries tab and in the countries area you can just go through and select all of them except for maybe the countries you want to have and you can disable those countries and, and that way they don't show up in the customers address section and so they know you only ship to the United States or Canada or whichever country you want so there's a there's a lot of flexibility here um, again another item I'd like to show you too is this estimated shipping actually gift cards and coupons you can decide whether to show this um, this estimated shipping section only pertains to live shipping uh, if you have table rates or the triggers and let me show you if we flip back here and all we use is oops it's in the shipping rates price triggers it's gonna always have a shipping rate there's really no selection a person ne needs to make 
and so the cart will always go ahead and calculate this shipping cost for you so there's no reason to have estimated shipping and so what you can do there is you can actually go into uh, additional um, where is that setting maybe it's back in shipping let me scroll down here and look Uh, the shipping rates. Um, sorry, I know it's in here. Uh, checkout. I'm pretty sure it's under checkout. Here it is. Uh, enable estimated shipping because we're dealing with the checkout screen. And you can turn that off. Uh, you might not need that feature. And so I'll just save this. And now when you look at your cart, you don't have that section. Because if you're using the triggers, there's no need to have that appear. Um, but again, we, really a lot of options here. Um, you set up your shipping based on what you need. Uh, we always recommend the simpler, the better. Uh, your customers like simple. Uh, they don't like anything difficult or hard to understand. You know, All of these trigger systems are very simple systems. Uh, so is static shipping. If you do get into the live shipping, my only recommendation is to really set it up with no shipping zones and also set it up so that you have lots of shipping codes so your customers are almost guaranteed to see a rate. Because if they don't get a rate, if all you do is apply one shipping code, uh, UPS Ground, and somebody from Hawaii orders and they can't, they'll never see that ground rate then the store is going to let them go through and place the order with zero dollars and just standard shipping because we want you to collect the order but you know you're kind of missing out on some funds there if if you let shipping uh, go unset up so that's how shipping works uh, again lots of systems uh, lots of different flexibilities here uh, it's definitely a place a lot of people spend some time working at to uh, get set up accurately we recommend again though to uh, be as simple as possible so any more questions uh, remember there's a help icon up here in the corner this will always take you out to our documentation on every single one of these and or you can submit a support ticket and we can help you thanks